sorry. Cool. Well, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Blues Fans TV. We've got Neil from the Beyond the 90 Leicester FC podcast. I got that correct, right? Yeah, Beyond the 90 LCFC, yeah. Okay, good. I wanted to make sure I did that. It's Leicester City, nil, Chelsea won. Chelsea through to semi-finals, but really and truly this game could have gone either way. What's your thoughts? Overall, I'm disappointed with how Leicester performed, you know. Uh, I think uh, Billy Gilmore had a few issues um, in the first half that gave away a few balls and we should have really capitalised on that. I actually said to one of the guys um, on our group, I was like, look, as soon as they bring Kovacic on, they're going to dominate the midfield. And yeah. that was the case. And literally, I, with, I said that about 26 minutes. I wasn't expecting you to make the changes at half time, but it just shows you that Lampard wants such a strong squad. So, yeah, I think you guys deserve the win. I'm really disappointed in how Leicester really turned up. Uh, but overall, yeah, you guys deserve that for sure. Really? I thought defensively you guys were very solid and your midfield was really aggressive in the press. In the first half, we struggled to get through you guys. You're only getting through through Pulisic. Yeah, I, I, I guess what you mean. It was kind of a, it was backwards and forwards a lot. So it was going to our defence, your defence, and there was a, we were managing to nick in the balls in the midfield. So and Diddy had a few runs through. Um, but then after after half time, it just seemed like you guys. It literally seemed like you guys went from boys to men as soon as you brought on Kovacic and you just solidified that midfield. We couldn't get through. So we had Dennis Pratt and Yuri Telemans, who was like they're up and coming um, Belgium internationals, but you can't get ahead of Kevin De Bruyne. You know how amazing he mm. is. Um, so they're decent, but they, when you've got like Barkley had a decent game, you, you've got. Um, Kante, as, as we know firsthand how well he can play, and then Kovacic, that midfield three, just runners. So, I get what you mean. Uh, were you disappointed? So, I know you guys played on Thursday. Were you disappointed in the way that coming into this game, like, your performance levels? or is that Would that play a big part in it? Um, I feel like, because we had the first game against Aston Villa, and there was a lot of different variations in terms of which players were more fit than others. And it was like very up and down. And you could sense the Leicester games a week afterwards. So you can't expect all these players to be back to match fitness. And this is the weirdest season ever, I guess, if you're being a football player. Because like, there's so many different varying factors into it. So it's, it's hard for me to look at a player and criticise them for a bad performance. Because for all I know, they're barely even match fit. I mean, Reese James, I don't think he had a good first half. But he struggled when he came on against Aston Villa as well. He didn't look match fit then. I can't really expect any changes in a week. Yeah, it makes sense. It's still new for the team, but so not many teams have hit the floor running that much, really. But that's just it's just a weird circumstances. What did you think of like? So I know Reese James, um, Billy Gilmore, and uh, was it uh, Mount got pulled at half time for mm. you guys? So was that three changes that you think? Did, is that normal, like Frank Lampard? Because I've not been following Chelsea that much, but them three changes were drastic. And it's like, look, I need change and I need change now to, in order to win the game and get through to the semis. Um, I think we've seen a lot of growth with Lampard in the substitutions, to be fair. A lot of people were questioning it at the start of the season. But especially now in the coming games, Lampard's substitutions have changed games. It changed the Aston Villa game. Uh, did it have much of an impact in the City game? I'm not so sure. Like We were more or less defensively solid most of the City game. But today, again, it's changed up. And it's changed a lot of games before in previous matches, but before in lockdown. So it's just changed with the manager. He's been growing and developing as a manager. And a lot of the players have developed greatly this season as well. Yeah, well, just like, for example, at the beginning of the... I was looking, just, just funnily enough, at the beginning of the substitutes... Um, before the game started and then that really showed me the difference between where Chelsea are and obviously we're doing all right for ourselves in third place at the moment but you guys are catching Man United are catching Wolves are doing really well and they're catching as well so we had that as well yeah sorry sorry I was gonna I've interrupted that one there but just your your substitutes and they for like Elisa Balaga, Alonso, Jorginho, Barkley, Pedro, Loftus-Cheek, Kovacic, Giroud, Azpilicueta like I look at that and I go man, these guys could walk into our team any day. And most of these are on like double or triple our team. Like, for example, we've got Damari Gray, Mark Albrighton, Wes Morgan, Christian Fuchs, like um, Ryan Bennett, who's on loan from Wolves. So the difference in just quality is just, is just there, just on the substitutions bench, let alone that player for player, arguably some of your, your Chelsea players are better than ours. So 
I think it says more about how well you you guys have been performing this season, though, because let's be real, you guys are the first team that's, break, that's broken the top six. I'm not sure what's happened with the top three race because you guys have dropped off a lot over the before lockdown and even coming out of it as well. So I'm not sure with you guys, but for top four, I don't see any reason why you guys would drop out. Well, we'll have to see. Um, you got well. You guys have been on such a winning streak, and we've been on the opposite. We've just since December also, we were absolutely on fire, looking to chase Liverpool. Since the Liverpool game, we just have looked not very good at all. Not not very good. We've been okay. And that's led to the drop-off slowly. So we had that second place pretty much secured. Man City kept up their run. We slipped up. And now it looks like, I'm not going to say we're dropping out of the top four, but something drastic needs to change because you guys don't look like you're stopping anytime soon. Manchester United, I don't know what's happening um, because they, look, they looked all right, I say, against um, Norwich the other day. Um, but there wasn't anything amazing there. But I, I say we are doing well. But if we... If you said at the beginning of the season, from a Leicester fan's perspective, we're going to get Champions League, I would have bit your hand off any day going, yeah, it's, we're going to be ahead of um, two of the, like, some of the big six. Of course I'll take it. But because of where we were in December, coming down and down a table, yeah. it's going to look like a right failure when, if we drop out of the Champions League spaces. I don't know. I'm just going to pose the question. Do you guys think you're going to stay top four or... Oh, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I'm really glad that this was the FA Cup and this wasn't points because otherwise you guys would have overtaken us and that's a six-point game. So looking at that, well, it just depends on the next couple of results that we're going to have. So for a lesser perspective, I'm hoping that we are, but overall we've had a better season than a Man United, in my opinion. But... <laughs> The way we're doing at the moment, we, so we've just recorded something post-match um, on our channel where we had two Liverpool fans on. As you can imagine, massive smiles, all's fun because they've just they've just won courtesy of you guys once again. So, um, so for our best, you know. Yeah, <laughs> you did it to us. You did it to Liverpool. Chelsea's fan of everybody. Hey, <laughs> so when we when we were talking about that, we're like, because they had Brendan Rodgers in 2013. And again, you give Man City the, the same thing. You give Man City the title then as well with the, with the slip-up. So from that perspective, I was like, do you see the same Rodgers that happened in 2013-14 as in now? And they both went, yeah, this is reminding me of that. So we looked at that and went, damn, that's not a good thing. And the thing is, we've not got the strength and depth that the Liverpool team had. As I was just telling you, our, our bench is, is good and it's up and coming and it's potential, but it's not quite there just as yet. So... Yeah, long story short, I'm, I'm hoping that this is a blip, but the longer this goes on, it's, it's, it's like you guys with Mourinho. It's like you just, you just can't get out of it. And no matter what you throw at the issue, it just, it just seems to be getting worse and worse. All right, well, guys, if you guys want to see more from this guy, don't forget to check out the Beyond the 90 Leicester FC podcast. Where can you guys check it out? Yeah, so you can find us on Facebook, uh, um, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and YouTube at Beyond the Ninety LCFC, and I'll, I'll give you a link in the description so you can find yeah, us there yes. as well. We'll put a link down in the description. We'll sort that out for you guys. If you guys enjoy this content, don't forget to like and subscribe to Blues Fans TV, and we'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Up the Charles.